All right. So this is my final project presentation for the wireless network class. My name is Leandro Durand. I'm a master's student at the University of Florida, pursuing my master's in electrical and computer engineering. The topic I picked for today was analysis smart antenna techniques and their uses for wireless ad hoc networks. So the basic outline of this presentation, I will show the system models and the main techniques. In this case, the different smart antenna designs and a simple rundown of what an ad hoc network is and the main pros and cons of each model. I will then show an analysis that running a simple MATLAB script uh, that I took down from the internet and modified to fit our simple, the simple requirements that I wanted. Uh, so the analysis will just show a simple node or a simple group of nodes and the different attempts and different models applied to just that same data. Um, I was also going to show a live view of it, but my MATLAB is having issues right now. So the best I can do is just give you the output that I was able to get before. I will also discuss possible improvements on some of these systems and some of the other techniques. And I'll also discuss possible future work on this design. So the system model and the main techniques. So what exactly are smart antennas? Smart antennas come in two flavors. You have your directional antennas, uh, which mainly focus on just one single target. The concept of this is that if you have a node a certain distance away or you just kind of want to communicate and emphasize a very important signal, this comes in handy because instead of taking all these different antennas and all these different all these different frequencies and gains and try to sparse them everywhere, this kind of takes them all into one specific direction. So this is great for communicating simply just between two nodes. But when you have when you start having multiple nodes, multi-path, multi-variable kind of environments, this is not as robust as it could be. So that is where the second type of smart antenna design comes in. Yeah, this is called the adaptive array antenna. So as you can see from the figure, it's kind of a mush instead of compared to the previous design where it's just kind of all centered in mm -hmm. one direction. So what the adaptive array antenna does is still, it takes all of these different antennas but now what it does is it weights the different signals. So now not the, the power of the system is not just focused in one direction. Now it's distributed among all of the different signals to try and compensate for what would be quote unquote the best setup that allows for to capture as many nodes as possible, if that's, that makes sense. I mean, you still have interference, of course, and from the sounds of this, this sounds more complicated than just a simple directional array. Here, you know, you're just sending the signals in one direction. It's super straightforward. It's easy to implement. Uh, but adaptive array antennas do take a little bit more time. But on the positive note, due to the fact that they can be so helpful, a lot of work has already been done on this kind of design, which has led to a more efficient, costly design and implementation. These things come, normally come in super tiny chips and can be easily added to any design. So then now comes to what are ad hoc networks? Ad hoc networks in a more basic simple definition are a collection of different nodes. You have, you know, if we're talking about mobile ad hoc networks, these nodes would be your cell phones, your, and if we're talking about other, you know, your electronic devices, your computer, basically points of transmission and reception. So you also have to take into account the area of these different nodes and these different receptions and receiving areas and that's kind of what's shown in this figure. So everything kind of overlaps and because everything is moving and shifting and some areas are within others and not within others, you have to be able, if you want to get data from let's say the light blue side to the bottom side, you can't just send it between those nodes directly because the area doesn't necessarily overlap. So then you have to, as I will discuss later, the concept of you know routing algorithms and your max and your different methods of trying to send this data as efficiently as possible. So 
what are the main techniques of this? As I mentioned before, yes, you have all these nodes and different sides. They're all trying to communicate and send data. But an issue that happens a lot is some of these nodes might send data to the same node without knowing. And this can lead to data conflicts or data losses. So as I mentioned, for example, from the previous design, previous figure, let's say just a simple, the yellow, the light blue, and then you have the green. Let's say the light blue and the green are trying to, or the red, I guess you can see that. So let's say that the red and the, and the blue are trying to communicate with the yellow. So you have those three. Um, if they both send a data packet at the same time without knowing that there's that communication going on, nothing will be received in the yellow circle. So the way this is fixed is by the concept of a ready to transmit signal and a clear to receive signal. This is similar to what was once described to me as the railroad system. So a concept of you know, a train cannot go on the same track as another train because it could lead to some issues. So the way this is tackled is they take a token. This token allows them to traverse to this rail and only you and only and you can only travel through that rail when you have that token. And that token is available once you're at the beginning of that rail and then once you're at the end of that rail. So it's a similar concept in the sense that you can only transmit the data when you've sent a, a signal to saying, hey, I'm going to traverse through this, through this rail, and then you've gotten a signal back saying the rail is clear to go. So it's a similar concept, but with these nodes. So let's say now light blue sends a, a ready to transmit signal to yellow, but yellow is in the process of receiving data from red. So now yellow sends it, sends it back saying, I am not ready to send, I am not ready to transmit. So now light blue has to wait until the proper communication between yellow and red is done. Then it will receive a clear to transmit signal. And that's when the data now can come in. Sure, it might lead to a little bit of a slowdown in a system, but it leads to a much safer, secure design that, can comp that won't have this kind of data conflict and data losses. And then the next concept is routing. As I mentioned before, just trying to find the best technique to, tr to communicate for further points. Um, you know, you can't just say, oh, I'm going to communicate from one end to the other when they're not communicated or when they're not within a certain range. So those different techniques uh, would imply, you know, using different gains and modifying different sizes to try and make this path as small as possible. Because the longer this data is traversing through these nodes, the higher the chance of interference happening, data loss, loss of gain, or anything really. So for my simple analysis, I took the script from MATLAB, modified some stuff, and here you have about say 20, 25 notes. I just kind of put on a graph and this is kind of how it looked. This is, this is just randomly sparse. So then you have the active communication using smart antenna. So now you have a couple nodes communicating with each other, as I mentioned before, you know, with that kind of directional beam kind of communication. Um, for sanity purposes, I kind of included also an omnidirectional antenna just to see kind of how that communication would work, just as, a, as another test to see, to get a better view of the communication between all the different nodes. And then it, I showed the active communication using smart antennas with bi-beam activators. So these are kind of where you can have it in multiple directions. It's still using a smart antenna design. And as you can see, it is slightly better than just smart antenna. So as I mentioned before, um, we have these routing techniques, these clear to send these different signals and these algorithms, and they're all pretty helpful in minimizing power, leading to better gain, leading to more clear signals. But there's still a lot of work that needs to be done. Um, due to the fact that, yes, your adaptive array antennas are more popular, they still have a lot of issues here and there. So a lot of work still needs to be done in these. But those are the ones that people are more likely to work on than your, just your simple directional antenna. They're just more of an introductory basic design to get an idea. So the, concepts involved. 
So possible improvements, as I said, more techniques can be looked at than the ones that I just mentioned before, but I was not able to get around to testing those. Uh, I can implement a more robust code and I can look more into the routing and show more of the different kind of routing algorithms. I didn't really get around to showing different possibilities of routing and different designs and how things can be tweaked. Uh, in terms of robust code, I kind of would have preferred to run more tests with more nodes, more variables, a bunch of different situations just to see how the systems could handle it. Uh, but I didn't get around to doing that and that's the possible improvement that I can do. Future work, I can also include a power comparison. I didn't really mention that. I kind of just gave you the theory and told you that there would be less power, but I wasn't able to show it to you mathematically. That would be some of the future work that can be implemented into this code because you do have the distance between them. You have your gain, you have your area, your length, your width. So from there, you can kind of determine the power dissipation through that distance. And as I mentioned before, I would have loved to test it with more setups and a variety of more nodes, but that's just for future work. And that's my presentation. Thank you so much.